Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at ISC 2016 in Frankfurt, Germany, and today we're at the Dell booth, but we've got a special guest here, Mr. Tim Carroll from Cycle Computing. How are you doing today, Tim? I'm doing great. Good to see you again, Rich. Yeah, yeah. It's been a while since we talked, yep. but I was hoping we could catch up. And I guess the big question is, why are we at Dell? What's going on here? Uh, well, it's, it's a very exciting time for us because Dell has always been about access to more compute for more researchers, more engineers, and the sysadmins that are serving that community as well. And uh, so I've been with Cycle now for two years, and that's where Cycle came from, was to say, hey, there's a way to use the cloud to bring even more access to more people. And so it was just a natural alignment between the two companies to be able to figure out a way for the entire community who's now said, you know what, we're not even debating anymore, should I or shouldn't I do cloud? It's now, how do I get started? And so with Dell and Cycle working together, it's never going to be easier for somebody to figure out, hey, let me find a workload, let me go find a way to run it. And that's what we're doing. Okay. Are, are we talking about cloud bursting here? Just when I got extra work that needs done, we, we, we move it over yeah. to the cloud? Well, I think it's a, it's a little bit of both. What typically happens is that people will start with a bursting problem because typically it's, I'm, I need access to say, 7,000 cores my workload and I've got 5,000 cores in, in house. And that's a very easy math problem. That's not going to happen in house. And so yeah. the, the burst use case is the first thing that gets people's attention. But ultimately what happens is for both commercial and public sector users is that they very quickly understand, wait a minute, I can start moving workloads off of my internal infrastructure and run them on cloud. And what happens is I've now freed up more of that infrastructure for the users who truly need it. So the ones who need the InfiniBand interconnects and all of the other things that Linux clusters do great work with, we're able to use some of the embarrassingly parallel, some of those other workloads that are really batch oriented, do them far more cost effectively somewhere else, and it makes for a better experience, not only for the users, but for the sysadmins who have to make those users happy. We wind up serving more science to more people by using both rather than just one or the other. Okay, it sounds like it's more about increasing utility than saving cost or things like that. It, it's not really a cost problem. I mean, it's really about access. It's access and utility, and, and the, the cost part of the equation doesn't really come in until the person says, okay, this is fantastic. I now realize I'm going to be able to address a problem I couldn't address before. How much does it cost? And the good news is, is that nobody falls out of their chair when they hear the number. They're like, that makes sense, right? And that's only getting more and more efficient as we move down the, the maturity curve with multiple providers. Okay. So Cycle's kind of famous for spinning up these giant instances on, on AWS yeah. and, and things like that. Has that changed or are you branching out here? Or what's the deal? Well, I think that's what we got our notoriety for because yeah. if you're going to be in the high performance computing industry, you better understand high performance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but high performance is a relative term. So the person that's been running on uh, a, a high-end workstation, to them, 500 cores is more than they could have ever imagined. And for us, it's really more about are you enabling somebody to do something that they couldn't do before? And whether that's 150,000 cores or 500 cores, it doesn't really matter. And that's really what the focus of Dell has been, is it's been in how can we serve the entire community as opposed to just hero runs. And so, you know, our average workload runs in the thousands of cores, but if you talk to people who are happiest with their experience has been using a combination of infrastructure and cloud, it can be anywhere from 500 to 5,000. Wow. Yeah. Well, Tim, this sounds hard to me. I mean, like, uh, I, I have a different machine, it's a different environment. I mean, uh, uh, can you show us how, how, how difficult is this? Yeah, so absolutely. I think the, the, the best way to do this, as we always say, you know, with anything relative to cloud, the easiest way to get started is just get started because the startup cost and the startup time is virtually nothing. So that being said, I think the best thing to do is let Rob Futrick show you just how easy it is to go do that. Okay, so I'm here with Rob Futrick. You are the CTO of Cycle Computing, are you not, sir? Uh, yes, I am. Nice to talk to you, Rich. Okay, yeah. I understand you've been doing this uh, uh, cloud computing stuff for a while now. Uh, yeah, so I'm actually one of the co-founders of Cycle Computing, but I've been working in distributed systems and batch computing for almost 20 years. Wow, wow. Okay. Well, Tim set the stage for us on how much is involved with spinning up a, a cluster with the Dell system and uh, with Cycle Computing. Can you show us more? I can, and there, there actually isn't that much involved. It's really pretty straightforward. Um, I mean, that's the, the goal of our software. So we have a product called Submit Once. It's part of Cycle Cloud, which is the product most of our customers are familiar with, most people have heard about. It's what we've used to do all those runs that have gotten pressed in the past. Um, the submit once aspect of that allows you to move a workload or to automatically route a workload between different compute environments. So 
uh, the, the typical use case is I have an internal cluster, I have internal infrastructure, and I want to add cloud capabilities to that. I want to add some compute, whether it's to burst a single workload or to split my workloads among them for various reasons. So on a uh, server running in Austin, Texas, I have an internal Dell cluster set up to run uh, Ansys. And so this is a typical HPC application, it's a typical environment, it's about 112 cores, nice little cluster. Um, let's say I'm a researcher and I'm running my, my CFD jobs, or I'm running my other simulation jobs, and I need more than 112 cores, now I have a problem. So, come over here, the, a lot of researchers are used to a command line interface, so we'll start with this. I'll uh, clear the screen here. The first thing I'm going to do is to show you that if I can check the environments, this will show all of the Azure capabilities that are already set up and running, as well as the internal cluster. And you can see there's an Azure Burst cluster here, and there's a home cluster, the home cluster being the internal Dell cluster. So all I have to do is say C route. I'm, I'm in my job directory already. I know what I want to run. And I'm going to run Fluent. Uh, oops, sorry. And I'll run C route Fluent. Now I know that this job requires more than 112 cores. I've kind of pre-baked this appropriately. The C route command is my way of asking submit once, where is this job going to run? Where are you going to route this workload? Now I don't have to ask. I can tell it where I want it to run. Uh, in this particular case, I want, to, uh, I want to let the system choose for me. Now the default behavior is where can this workload run? I'll run it there. Then I'm going to look for capacity. Maybe this job could fit on the internal cluster, but the internal cluster's queue has already got some jobs in it. It's going to route it to cloud. The goal is to get the researcher down to zero queue time. And so, uh, you know, and maybe it's a low priority job. They don't mind saying, no, 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 no. Run this on the internal cluster, let it wait a day. It's a Friday, I don't mind. But typically that's not what the researcher says. Now in this particular case, you can see that it's going to go to a, a cluster with a rank greater than zero. That's a, a, a detailed way of basically saying where there's room and where it makes sense. In this case, uh, we've maxed out the Azure cluster at 256 cores, so it's saying I'm going to run it in Azure. So all I simply do is say C sub fluent dash max. It's going to process for a second. It's going to submit um, basically a small DAG out into Azure. Uh, there's nothing running in Azure right now other than a head node, basically a job queue. The DAG is essentially a transfer the data, then run the work, and then pull the data back. Very simple. Much more complicated workflows are possible, already being done, but again, for uh, kind of cooking show illustration purposes. Um, there's no infrastructure running because why run it ahead of time? So in the cloud, as we can see in our GUI here, there's the job queue. Now, in the next 10, 20 seconds, it'll detect that there are jobs in the job queue, and CycleCloud will go out to Azure and say, okay, well, the job was submitted. I know it needs 128 cores. I'm going to get 128 cores uh, worth of capacity. I'm going to auto, you know, automatically spin it up. I'm going to install the Ansys environment, all the libraries, all the users. Anything that job needs to run is going to be handled automatically. The job will run, the data will come back, and all the researcher will know is from their command line on their, on their machine, they ran a job, it ran somewhere, and then it was back. And that's the end of the story. They could come back in here and say, you know what, I have this other job that doesn't need nearly as many cores. Where is this job going to run? Oh look, this job only needs 112 cores. I happen to have 112 cores in my, in my internal environment. It's going to route it to the home. And so if I then C sub this job, there, it's been submitted to the home cluster. And I can run C stat. And we'll see that in Azure Burst, I have the transfer in, the run job, and then the transfer out. And then in the internal, uh, the internal cluster, I have my, my, my smaller ANSYS job, which is now already running on that cluster as it was pre-configured. And so I can do this all day. And the nice thing is, is that if I need to have different software applications, it's very easy in CycleCloud to start adding other environments. And I can start directing them wherever they make the most sense. That's it. That's why I said there isn't a whole lot to it. Once it's set up, the user is off and running. So Tim, we just saw the demo here, so let, let's switch gears a little bit. Uh, um, wh where is this headed with cycle computing and Dell? You know, what's the objective? What's going on? It's, it's a good question because I had the same conversation with Jim Gantier about a year ago, and it was great because I had just seen him present what the Dell strategy was going to be to a room full of folks, and, and he and I were chatting, and he said, hey, it's very simple. We want to be first to market with the best solutions for our customers because they're demanding customers in a demanding market. And so, simple, but a high bar to meet. And so what we're going to do is we're going to spend uh, what you'll see out of the two of us together 
over the rest of the year is developing this solution in a way that makes it not only easier for people to access, but once they've accessed it and they understand the full power of it, that all of the pieces are there to be able to move that, not just HPC workloads, but all of the big data workloads and machine learning and the other pieces of the puzzle that are coming together for what is a market that's all of a sudden the, blinds are the lines are blurring already, that uh, if Cycle and Dell focus constantly on being first to market with the best solution, that's going to put their customers in the best position to take advantage of it. And that's the guiding principle for what we got going, so stay tuned.